This third tape in our Satir series features a particularly rich and moving example of Virginia's work. Some family therapists work primarily by making adjustments in the larger family system so that individuals within the system have more freedom of choice. In contrast, Virginia often worked directly with the individuals expanding their choices. She frequently worked with one family member and then another in turn, always sensitive to the responses of others in the family. In this session, Virginia's focus on one individual, Linda, stands out very clearly. Virginia very quickly assists Linda in zeroing in on the long-standing resentment and anger that she's felt towards her mother, and then uses a variety of interventions to move Linda to an experience of compassion, understanding, and forgiveness for her mother. At the same time, this allows Linda to feel better and stronger within herself. The session begins with Virginia asking participants how they respond to what she's just done on the previous videotape. I'd like to hear now from some other people here about what happened for you again uh, with this last section. Who somebody would like to share with me about that? What happened for you? I'll share. Come. Thank you. And you are? I'm Linda. Linda. Hi, Linda. Hi. This whole thing has been a very emotional experience today, and I think what has come up for me is that I started getting this tremendous sense of, of um, the profound connection that I, I could have with people. And I'm, I'm somewhere in between being incredibly powerful and a total wimp. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I have a picture for that. Well, we'll go ahead. Yes. Does anybody know about that? The feeling of being, I can do it in the world, and oh, now it's not a piece of wet spaghetti. How many know that one? Let's see, how many know that? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Only today I was much closer to the powerfulness and, and feeling. Um, I was weeping back there for the first section, just feeling um, very, very sad about. The, the distance that I feel from people so often, and yet the other part of me wanting to just, and times I'm in touch with this, where I just can embrace everyone, and I feel total love for everyone. And um, I feel like I could be instrumental in helping people change, and I was looking at you and how beautifully you do this, and wanting to do it too, in whatever it means for me. Wonderful, Linda. Let me let me just do a little something with you. Can you see a place in your life to be wet spaghetti? To be wet spaghetti? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think I can. All right. What I'd like you to do is now look at the picture and seeing yourself as wet spaghetti, and let's see what what comes out of that for you. Because I got a little worried at first that you were going to get rid of that West spaghetti thing. <laughs> and then I thought you'd be right back where you got before you'd be, be skinny in one little old thing that you could do, and that's always be powerful. But let me see now about the, about the wet spaghetti. Okay. When can you see that just being... I see myself maybe lying on my couch with a bunch of friends just feeling totally vulnerable and and having people nurture and take care of me. Okay. That's, how does that feel? I, I like it. That's good. Now, that <laughs> would not be the way you would be if you wanted to carry a big bag of groceries, would it? No. No. All right. So what does this le lead us to? This leads us to choice. To choice. That when I need to do this, I can pull this out of me. When I need to do this, I can pull this out of me. But if I've got a rule, I always have to be a certain way, then I can't do it. Now I also want to ask you another question. Do you really think you can love everybody at the same time? At the same time? Yeah, or can you love anybody, everybody, period? I think that I can, I would like to get to a place where I can go beyond people's personalities, which may be ugly at a given moment, and just love them for the connection that we might have as, as human beings or that light that you were referring to or something. All right, what are you going to do with their nasty behavior? Well, I, I won't spend a lot of time around them. I'll make the choice of not hanging out with people that are nasty, but still I don't want to have hate for them. I okay. want to love them for being a human being. This is such a central thing, and I want to elaborate it a little bit. Um, 
Oh, good. I'm glad you picked him. <laughs> well, I was I reading could. your mind. You know, I'm reading your mind. And don't believe it. I wasn't reading your mind. Okay. Now, what I heard you say is, I don't want to go around with hate feelings. Right. I don't want to go around with hate feelings. Now, what you didn't say, but maybe it's true, that you know hate erodes you. Mm -hmm. Because what hate does is it starts eating on you. How many of you know that? It starts eating on you. And it eats and it eats, and the more you hate, the more you want to kill the object of the hate. See, this, this runs a very interesting thing. Once you do a categorization, or you stereotype something, or you make a prejudicial uh, kind of, of thing, then that has to be the focus of hate. It has to be the focus of, especially the, uh, the prejudice bit, it has to be a focus of hate. Now, hate comes because you feel vulnerable. Because if you weren't doing what you're doing, wearing that mustache, for instance, you know all mustached men have got very bad ideas in their mind. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say. <laughs> anyway, so the, the, there comes the fear, and the hate is to cover up the impotence. And so when we put ourselves in the spot of where, our, where we have to feel impotent, we start to erode ourselves. We start to erode. All right. Now, you don't want to do that. Now, let us for a moment now, yeah, we will give him some names later, to think about what you want to do is keep yourself in, the, in as much congruence as possible, which is that you're letting yourself know what you feel. Now, actually, the way out of hate is to let yourself know you're vulnerable and that you're feeling impotent. That's the way out of hate. When I work, I do something regularly in San Francisco with the people who work under the streets and the sewers and all kinds of places like that, and there are many people of different colored skins, and there's much trouble with those people. So what I do is I help them to develop their and to discover their vulnerabilities, their fear of being loved, their fears, whatever they might be. And so the first step in dealing with the hate is to allow yourself to be in touch with your own vulnerability. Now, to not be in touch with your vulnerability before you felt was a protection that this awful one over here, that mustache, you know, is, is hides a lot well, of awful it things. It saved me. Well, it, it, in a way, yes, but not yet, in a way. You misunderstood it, but that's all right. It okay, saved right. you. Okay. All right, so, so then here you are. And um, you said something about saving. What hate did you use to save you? I didn't mean that the hate saved me. I meant protecting myself from being vulnerable saved me from what I perceived as um, things that would harm me in my, in my family, let's say. All right, now let's hold that a minute, because now you're talking about something else. You're talking about your ability to see those things that would be harmful and for you to then move away or beyond or cope differently with it. That's a different thing because that opens you up to allowing yourself a whole lot of possibilities. I don't want, I, what I want on this concept is to be able to help people to see clearly that they always have choices. Mm -hmm. So let's make, who is the, uh, let's see who in your family, father, Mother, who was it that you, or both, or how? That I what? When you grew up, that you, you wanted to protect yourself Mother. against. Mother. All right, well, you're in the wrong <laughs> sex for that, but stay up here. Let's, let's pick up somebody. Would you come and be the mother? Oh, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> well, I can tell you that whenever you get yourself into something with me, what people report is that it ends wonderfully. Okay. So I will tell you that, and I know Good. that's true. All right, now. I already have a picture, but I would like you to tell me how come, or what is the picture of her that uh, makes you feel vulnerable? I'm supposed to be picturing her as my mother? Yes, that's right. And give her... She... Um, say you to her, it'll okay, help. Okay, you, you... You cannot stand my joyfulness. And so you are constantly putting me down and picking on me. All right, now tell her, to get, let's have some dialogue. How does she pick on you? You're too skinny. Oh, too skinny. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful one. Is she heavy? Chunky. Chunky. Okay, all right. Well, I understand that one. All right, now, <laughs> what else does she say? She, uh, you, you always tell me that uh, I talk too loud and to calm down, keep it down. All right, okay, you do that. Okay, you talk too loud and you should keep it down. What else? You're too skinny, you should... Uh, you should. Um, 
talk a little, uh, softer. She doesn't tell you that, though, but keep your voice down. Why don't you do something with your talent? You're so talented, you never do anything with your talent. What talents is she thinking about? Are they the Music. same as you think? So, all right, you're not. You're wasting your talent, eh? Right. Oh, okay. What else? That's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as we're starting on this okay. string, why don't we make a big one out of it? Um, you're just like your father. Oh, wonderful. That's a great one. Now, what's wrong with your father that you're like him? He's Irish. Oh, I see. <laughs> Oh, so, and you're half Irish, so right. tell her that she can only be half critical of you, because one <laughs> half is her, but nevertheless, okay. Well, but what else about your father? Um, ir irresponsible. I mean, uh, does that mean that he doesn't give her the money she wants, or he doesn't consult her, or... They don't talk. They, they don't talk. For they how do. many years have they not talked? Well, my father's passed away now, so they're really not talking, no. but no. <laughs> um, <laughs> for 40, forever... Well, years. now, wait a minute. Oh, just a minute here. How do you suppose they got... Would you please embrace each other? I would like you to see embracing each other. You're now 16 and 14. Embrace, please. <laughs> Is that when they met, when they were very young? How old no, they were they? they were older, 30, 30, uh, mid-30s. All right, so they're mid-30s. But you, you know that happened? That they embraced? Yes. I doubt it. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did he... Did, 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 did your, uh, her mother work with a marriage broker, or...? What was this? They, I think they met in a, on a blind date. Well, you could, a lot of people meet on the blind date, and you just meet and go right on by. These two didn't do that. I know. How come? Because she was lonely, and he wanted somebody to save her. Save her? Mm-hmm. Or him? Uh, save him. Well, that sounds like par for the course. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. Uh, now, do you suppose that they might have met anybody else uh, that um, he would think she was lonely, but he could also have found some other people that were lonely, and um, she could have found somebody that uh, she wanted to keep her company. You suppose that ever happened? That they found oh. some other people? Was this the only catch that they could make? That's a tough question. Um, I think that the timing was right that they were both getting older and they felt that they better do something quick because it was going to get too late. Now, do you really believe that? No, I don't. All right. I don't either. I don't either. That, but that's the PR that right. goes out, yes, right. because you didn't see what was going on then. What I can believe is they both shy, and I can see him as being in a family where he had to get all the other kids uh, educated or something before his father dying. I don't know what. But they had to put off marriage. For some for some reason, and so they their gonad flapping wouldn't have been quite as obvious, but it had to be there. Mm -hmm. How many times did they do it? How many kids do they have? Three. Three. Well, that's pretty good. All right. <laughs> so these these two people, when you saw them, you didn't see this. You didn't see what brought them together. Because my hunch is that they were both scared chickens. All right. Would you put your arms like that? Yeah. Scared to death. I don't want to feel, I don't want to, I, I'm, I'm afraid of this happening or that happening. What do you know about her life growing up? Very difficult. What was difficult about? Now you talk to me. Um, a father that was domineering and perhaps abusive. and. Uh, so she'd been used to being slapped around. Right, Italian immigrants, so there, were, there was lots of you need to behave a certain way so that people don't perceive you as being different or weird. and. And um, lots of, uh, she wasn't allowed to be with boys or date men, so that was often very difficult. If he even saw her in the same block with a man, she was punished and those kinds Did of things. Did he beat things. her up? Um, it's, it's hard to say, but probably. All right, okay. There isn't that kind of communication, so I don't know for sure. All right, now what are you feeling, what are you feeling about um, what you're just saying, about the kind of experiences that this lady had before she ever thought of being your mother? Before she I ever thought of being married. a lot of empathy. Okay. Now, I wonder if you can translate that even further into appreciation. Let me tell you what I have in mind. She's still trying. But what does she say to you? She says, in effect, to you, you need to be fat. Because if you're fat, you'll probably be healthy. That's one of the things that people thought in those days. What was one of the other things you gave me? I'm too... Oh, you talk too loud. All right. Now, I have a feeling that loudness of voice is associated in her mind with trouble. 
Now, I also know something else. It was easier for you to connect with your father than it was with her. So she looks at you, and she feels all the lost parts. That isn't your fault or her fault. But this woman really never, ever felt that she got anything out of life, okay? All that does is help her to understand this, for you to understand this. It doesn't mean anything about loving her. It doesn't mean that this is a pleasant thing. It doesn't mean that it's wonderful to hear somebody say you're too skinny. By the way, I got, is she still around? Mm -hmm. Next time she says that, you can, because you've already developed a system where she's going to say that, and then you're going to have to do whatever you do. Now, the next time she says that, would you please tell her that she's too skinny? You're too skinny. Now, would you go up to her and thank her for noticing you? Take her hand and thank her for noticing you, and then say, you know, I've been meaning to share with you before. I know I've often, you've often noticed me like this, but I would just like to tell you how I feel about my body. But first, you thank her for noticing you, and then say you would like to share how you feel about your body, because I think she thinks you're going to die. You don't eat enough. Do you know how that used to be within the circles? It's not very long ago, you know, that I show my love by food and if you stay skinny it means you don't get it well, my mother's Italian that'll give you some insight yeah I, I know that but you don't have to be Italian to do that <laughs> how many of you had mothers who, who where you got love or supposed to get love through the food let's see yeah sure you do that what yes okay well, all right, well maybe you can stop now okay you'll show your love with your arms and not with your food because that was never made for that but she thought so no as you thank her for that, what do you feel? Thank her for noticing you. You're not thanking her for telling you what she's telling you, but for noticing you. Are you aware of that? What does that feel like? I'm having trouble doing it. I know, because for so long, <laughs> let me tell you what she looked like to you. Would you put your fingers up here? <laughs> That's right. And that she was trying to make your life miserable, right? Absolutely. Okay. And now everything you saw sort of added up to that. And with where you were... That could be uh, that could could be your your uh, awareness of that, but she's really not a miserable lady. She just looks like one, right? Yes. All right. Now, what are you feeling right now as you're looking at her? She looks ridiculous. <laughs> All right. So put your put your fingers down at this moment. What I'm asking you to do at this at this time. See, when you came up here, you said you feel power, and then you feel this wimpy business. Didn't you tell me that? Mm -hmm. I've got the right person and all that. Okay. When you feel what you called wimpy, would you give her a point finger and say, you're too skinny, and you talk too loud, and you don't take care of your music. You're blessed and talented, and I sit around, and I see all that, and you don't do a thing with it. You're doing it to spite me. I, you know I want a concert pianist, or I don't know what it is. It doesn't matter, because the same message you'll get through. So tell her all that. Uh, you're too skinny, and um, you're just sitting around not doing anything with all that talent and that really is reflection on me and um, I just want you to be more powerful and and to keep your voice down and <laughs> okay so what did you do when you did that how did you take what she was giving you Let me put that down now I, I felt this burning sensation in, in my in this center area and I I mean I could just hear it's the same tape yeah. and so mm -hmm. I I just started felt myself closing down a little bit more and then feeling that that anger that where I have I I'm confused with what you're saying when do I say to her I don't want to hear that anymore and when do I say gee thanks mom for for telling me and noticing how wonderful for you to notice that when yes that's that, the first the step that's the first step Is telling her where to get off? No. Oh. It's not the first step. <laughs> thanking her for noticing you. Oh, thanking. That's the first step. Now, what do you have to do to, to thanking her for, her for that, taking that first step, thanking her for noticing you? It seems that I have to shift my perceptions from seeing that as a criticism and a, and a way of putting me down and seeing that as, a, as her way of loving me. Well, it might not be that, but I think it is some of that. Now, do you have any kids? No. Do you have anybody close to you? I have a wonderful husband. All right, would you pick him out here? I want to see what you do with him. <laughs> any husband will do. <laughs> any husband will do. Yeah, well, you sure. Okay. Now, tell me, how do you judge him? 
He's how do I judge him? Yes, he's yes. What wonderful and kind and sensitive. Isn't there anything wrong with him? Yeah. All right, tell me what's wrong with him. Well, he's a little wimpy sometimes. All right, okay. <laughs> so you're just a wimp. Let's do that one. Well, I'm going to exaggerate it. You're just a wimp. But, but I don't I, do this to him. I know. Okay. You think it, though. Well, oh, so, no, so. we talk about, okay, you're just a wimp. Why don't you Why don't you assert yourself once in a while instead of having me have to be the one that says no to people? All right, close your eyes now and just let yourself into how you feel about that wonderful judge inside yourself, <laughs> which your mother also had. I don't like it. Now I want you to keep your eyes closed and look at that judge. That judge is a possibility for you to take a look. The kind of judge you've got and the kind of judge your mother had were pretty hard on both of you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're okay. Now, judges can let people go free. They can imprison them. They can also take what they see in front of them and give guidance. Now, what kind of a judge do you want for you? A guiding judge. All right, now open your eyes now and think I now have a guiding judge inside of me. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when you have that guiding judge, how can you use that guiding judge to be able to signal to your husband, like later you will signal to your mother, I hear you. I hear you, and let me share with you what happens for me when that happens. That's your guiding judge. Just let the words come out of this beautiful throat of yours and see what happens. I, it would be helpful to me if sometimes you would assert yourself and be the person that says no to people on the telephone because it's real difficult for me to be in that role all the time. Okay, now close your eyes. And I want to ask you to ask yourself, is it possible that you have ever um, done the same? Been a wimp, you mean? Yeah. In your language. Mm -hmm. All right, now look up with your beautiful eyes and just look at him and say, I know what wimping is. I'm working on it, too. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, now when you discovered your own wimpy, which you said, you know, mm -hmm. you didn't hide it. You didn't. Right. All right. One of the things that bothered you about about that was that uh, when your husband did it, was that it put you in a space where you didn't want to be. If he went, if he all the time. Well, that's the way you okay. accepted it. Okay. There's no reason you have to accept it, but you did. Okay. All right. Now stand outside just a little bit here now. And remember when I said, can you thank her for noticing you? And you said, I don't want to do it. Now, what did it mean to you to thank her for noticing you? I think it meant that um, if, if I acknowledged that, that she, let's see, that I was almost going to have to defend myself more, maybe. If I acknowledged that she noticed that I was thin, that it would open up a whole no, new... No, that's not what I said. There's oh. a very different thing from noticing me. Okay, tell me what, you, what you're saying here. I'm saying thank you for noticing me. Mm. Isn't it better to be <laughs> noticed no matter what for? Boy. Just let's see what happens to you. Would you move back a little bit and just say, let your body say, thank you for noticing me. Let's see what happens. Thank you for noticing me. All right. That's all you're saying thank you for. Mm -hmm. All right. How did that feel inside? Dishonest. Uh-huh. What's dishonest about it? Because I'm tired of only being noticed by her in negative ways. You want to be noticed differently, and I'm giving you or a way not, to do it. I'm, I'm willing to even not be noticed. I know. <laughs> that would be a terrible thing. <laughs> Tell me wh what's going on in your objection business here. Because I think that my mother only notices me in, ne in negative ways. Okay. Would you like to change that? Yes. All right. Now, I let's... think. You think. <laughs> All right. I want to now make a big concept out of this, and let's see what happens. Okay. Your mother really never believed that you cared about her. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure she thought you cared much more for your father. Mm -hmm. Can you visualize or even understand in some way how a woman could feel that one of her children didn't care about her? Mm -hmm. All right. You've, have, you ever, have you ever had the feeling that somebody didn't care about you, they cared more about somebody oh, else? definitely. All right. 
So you know what that feeling is like. Now, your mother, I think, has the same feeling. Now, let's see what happens. Your mother has to be on the protection side the, uh, for herself with you. Can you see how that would be? Mm -hmm. All right. She wants, to be, she wants to be someone who is important to you. Look what she picks. Your weight, your voice, and your musical talent. By any chance, do you think you're too thin? I think I'm too thin, but there isn't anything I can do about it. Well, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. Okay. All right, so you join your mother. Thank you. I have the same observation. I will not say that to my mother. All right, go on being stubborn. It's okay. And, uh, and now about your voice. Does that ever get too loud? Have you ever noticed that for yes, yourself? Yes, sure. All right, so you, th you, you say, I notice the same thing. Now, have you noticed that you have not been um, uh, uh, utilizing your music? Maybe to what she would like. I feel like I use my music quite a lot. Okay. So you're in touch with your music in a way that she doesn't know about. Or if she knows about it, it doesn't fit what she would like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I know you're giving me lots of resistance. And that's <laughs> typical because it would be like if I... See, this is the game that people play. And it's a sad game. And that is I've turned my parents into devils and saints. Mm -hmm. And if my parent really cared about me... She wouldn't. She would have dealt with me differently, or he would have. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm, in a way, I'm asking you to do a great big thing, which is to respect. This was what Chris was talking about. Respect the fact that she grew up, however she grew up. Mm -hmm. She didn't grow up with any kinds of skills about how to be affectionate. She didn't know that. She didn't have anybody say to her, "Oh, you're wonderful." She got instead, "What are you doing that for?" Always disobeying. I'll clout you. You'll probably come home pregnant in a few minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's what she heard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I'd just like you to be in touch with that, with whatever feelings that, that gets for you, to be now in touch with something about her inside. What is that? What happens for you? I think it. I'm, I'm really scared of feeling the depth of her pain. Okay. I think that's a very important thing. Mm -hmm. That was true and around you all the time. Your father couldn't do it because it was too much. Her mm -hmm. pain was too strong. He also, also, I think, did everything he could to make his li her life lighter. Mm -hmm. In addition to taking care of the kids. Also, at the same time, the behavior that came out of that was rejecting behavior but not because she was rejecting, okay? But you couldn't know that. Mm -hmm. When you're a little kid, would you get down your knees to show that you're little? All right. And so she's coming out with her education. Your hair isn't right. You've got to eat more. You've got the wrong companions. What else is it? Oh, it doesn't need matter. You know what it is. Now, now your father comes along, and he, he without making too big a fuss about it, kind of draws you over to him a little bit and, out of the out of the sight of your mother, and you have something with him. Isn't that how it went? Yeah, he was nice. He was nice, yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you have to ask yourself, how come, if he's so nice, how come she's such a devil? But that's another question. All right. So at this moment in time, from the time you were very little, with the eyes that you had, you did exactly what you needed to do. Because how you nobody was around. You didn't come to the seminary yet, you know. So And neither did your mother. Now you're grown up. And it's like you took all of these learnings and you said, in effect, would you get up now? You said, in effect, my mother did not find me acceptable. She did not find me lovable. And for that, I will make her pay. The revenge kind of thing that comes out of this. How many of you know that one? I'm going to make you pay. <laughs> all right. Now... I would, when you hear this, I don't want you to start doing, doing a downer on yourself. But it, the, the conclusions were that if you were, if she was any good, she would have found your lovability. All right. So now you're at a space, and what is she now, in her 70s? 83. 83, okay. She's still trying to find a way to be meaningful to you. I don't want to push anything down your throat. What I am saying, it's like two kids that are battling in a family, and one wants to kill the other one. 
and one will say, listen, no matter what you do, I'm not going to do it. There. I'll kill you first. The other one says, well, not unless I kill you first. All right, what are we doing? We're talking about the, the vulnerability. And you still feel the feeling that she was rejecting you. Now, when I said to you, can you honor the fact that she noticed you? That was hard. I want you to ask her a question, and you answer however it comes out. Have you ever loved and valued me? Ask her about that. Have you ever loved and valued me? Yes, but I couldn't say so. And not only that, you had dreams that she could be what you were not. Tell her about that. I wanted all the things for you that, that I didn't have or couldn't have. You believe that? Mm -hmm. Come closer, just a step closer while you let yourself believe that. And she had what so many people of the world, a way of training and teaching, which was how bad you are. Why aren't you different? And I know you know a lot about that. So as you look at her now, what are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling love okay. and sadness. Now, what I'd like you to do is just be with that for a moment. Because as you sense that feeling of love and sadness, you begin to feel something different in here. Mm -hmm. See, one of the things that saddens me so much, Linda, is how many people miss love in their lives because there hasn't been anyone around to help them to discover it. When we're little children, what we do is we do the best we can. Your mother, I can tell you, a million years would never have ever thought that she was in any way discrediting you. She came out of a, an area of ignorance, and she came out of an era where she felt that she couldn't look at herself as of value. And she was following the same old don't pattern. Mm -hmm. So at this moment in time, where's that husband of yours? You come and stand beside your mo your mother-in-law. Okay. What you said about him, he's wonderful. I want you to look at him, and while you're thinking he's wonderful, would you out loud say, "I'm wonderful too"? See what happens to you. I'm wonderful too. How did that feel to you? It felt wonderful. Okay. <laughs> now I want you to look at your mother, and know that if she knew what you know now, she could say the same thing. What does that feel like for you? It's, it's interesting. I feel like um, if I were to say some of the things that I really want to say to her, both painful and wonderful, that that's very scary. Yeah. She would cry. Because it would unleash all of this emotion in her because I've never seen her cry in my whole life. You know, that kind of thing. And if she were to cry, can you bring a box of Kleenexes along? That's almost the only thing that happens when people cry is they have tears. <laughs> I've never seen any building explode. And if you think there's going to be tears, I always think it's a kind, courteous, loving thing to do to bring Kleenex. Me too. All right. So now, as you look at her and are able to connect with her and to talk to her about the things you found painful and wonderful, what does that feel like to you? Very scary. Okay. All right. As you think about the scariness, what is the picture that comes to you? The scariness. What picture are you seeing that that makes it scary? The only I don't see a picture. I just I have a feeling of just finally being that close to somebody. Okay. That vulnerability or that, that touching or, or seeing my mother do something I've never seen her do before express any emotion other than anger okay all it's right it's just scary okay that's because it's new yes in our relationship okay it, are the odds and the stakes at this moment in time strong enough for you to risk seeing something new that you've never seen before I've asked myself that question a lot with, but only in terms of my mother well let's see about you because this has really to do with you. I am do. I feel that I am doing that. Look at her now. In other relationships, I feel like I'm working out my relationship with my mother 
in other relationships. That will not be the same. Those people out there, not your mother, this is your mother. You know what I have a hunch about? You don't want to lose. <laughs> and so you think if you start talking to your mother like this, she will have won. That's a strong feeling I have. Is there any value to that? Validity? No, I'm not I'm not feeling that. What um, are you feeling? I think I'm afraid to come out of hiding with my mother. Okay. Would you start off? Let's do a little role play here and just see what happens. What I'm doing here is I am hoping that what Linda is so beautifully allowing herself to do, the content may not may be painful, but the process, we all have these things inside of ourselves in one way or another. And the process of allowing ourselves to move in a different way is what's being manifest here. Remember where you came. You came from, I feel power sometimes and I feel wimpy sometimes. What I said, the wimpiness comes when you feel impotent. Okay? Mm -hmm. And what I gather in your mother, the impotence comes because you never really felt valued by her. Mm -hmm. That's what I get. Is that true? Yes. And oh. it, it might be an oversimplification in the sense that... Most that, things are. Okay. Just like your attitude. Are you aware of that too? I mean, the feeling of that she's going to vaporize, or I don't know, you're going to vaporize, okay? Because this belongs to a time when you were very little and where you didn't have ways of looking at things. The yearning piece inside of you. Bring up your self-worth. Let's see what your self-worth is crying for. Now, let's give somebody okay. else a chance because she's self-worthed out. Well, look around and find somebody. It's okay. Anybody can do male or female or assorted. You get down behind, and I down below. And what I, the song I've been hearing from there with what you're saying is, I want to be loved and valued by everybody. Is that true or not true? It's true. So would you just start that way with just maybe little, but just very lightly, I want to be loved and valued by everyone. Now there's a piece of you that says, be careful. You've got to be careful who you get to love and value you. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, could you for the moment allow yourself to know that you need to be cautious, but that you don't have to have your caution in front of you, you can have it beside of you, and that you can go into another place in yourself where you know something about this lady as a human being, that way she is has very little to do with you. You know that. Mm -hmm. I think a piece of you does know that. Mm -hmm. But the hurt that's gone on for so many years, you want to see the dancing in her eyes. And you're still leaving it all up to her. And it would be nice. But what about for you, starting a process she knows nothing about? What about you being that child that's grown up now who can manage on new things because you've learned new things. Your mother isn't here. Mm -hmm. She did, wouldn't know how to do this. Could you show her the way? I'd like to. Look at her and let that be, in, be part of what you're in touch with now. And know that showing her the way might begin to give some response to this little self-worth. I want to be loved and valued. What does that feel like to you? I'm willing. Okay. I, I've been looking for that way. Okay. Now what I'd like you to do now and see what it sounds like. Thank you for paying attention to me. And there's some things in the way you pay attention that I'd like to share with you that don't fit with me. And going up to her and taking her hand when you thank her. Because that's the peace that she needs. The peace that you want to do is to share how you're different from what she expects you to be. So that you can say, you know, I've been worried about my weight too. I can't seem to gain any weight. Or I've been worried sometimes 
when I talk too loud. I share those. The music is another thing, as I do it differently. Could you imagine yourself doing that? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see what happens as you move it out of your throat. Mom, I really appreciate you noticing me, but I, I need to tell you a couple of things. Would you not leave the butt off and let that be a complete sentence by itself? Okay. Mom, I really appreciate you noticing me. The thing with the weight has come up 9,483 times. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. The, the, the thing with the weight has come up so often. And I need you to know that I feel healthy, vibrant. I, I am not sick. Um, you know, you, you know how I live. I eat good food. I exercise all the time. And I see that you are worried about me, and I would just like to suggest that you not worry anymore because I'm really healthy. All right, now let this fade for a moment and just be in touch with how you're feeling about sharing this delicate, truthful part of yourself with your mother in a context of acknowledging her presence as well. How does that feel? It, it feels schizophrenic. One part of me feels really wonderful in doing that, and the other part of me is going like this, waiting for her to come back and saying, but you look terrible. You're skinny, and you'll, you know, you're never going to have any friends if you're that okay. skinny. All right. Now, what we have to stop at this moment, and I'd like to start with that after the lunch, because this is also another <laughs> wonderful piece. Are you game for doing that? Yes. All right. So let us stop here right now, and then we can go on for this after the lunch, okay? okay. Thank you. Linda, let me come back. Uh, Linda, would you come back? See, there are a couple of things when I move as I was moving this morning. Hello, love. Hi. Um, and that is, it, I would not want to exploit anybody. I don't want to leave anybody hanging. When we start something, the process of change is, a, is one that we need to move through with it. And the last thing I would want you to do to remember from this morning is that you had to do anything different. But if something changed or appealed to you or, or you wanted to move out somehow or another with, with getting some new perspectives on things, then some things would happen. So I wondered what did happen for you after, we left, after you left the stage? I felt, um, I feel incomplete, um, lots of fear about whatever it is I'm trying to let go or transform into love or however you want to say it. Um, I, I felt spacey at some point, then I felt tired at other points, and then I felt weak need at other points, but I really want to finish it. Okay. Now, do you have in your mind an image of what finished means? When you have finished, how will you know you have finished? By the way, would your mother come and stand behind me? Where is she? There she is. Just stand behind me. And with your father, too. Find your husband. Just be behind <laughs> there. Just behind me now while you talk to me about what would it look like when you were finished. This is a question just, a lot of people will ask. Um, it, I, I see it in terms of layers. I guess some sort of clarity. And what is the clarity about? About what I can do to... Uh, click over to a different mode of communicating with my mother. Do you want to do that? I think so. All right. Check inside and see if there's any objection to, to, uh, to what you're saying right now. Any objection at all? Well, the objection comes up in the fear again. Okay. All right. Would you give me a picture of the fear? Your picture of the fear. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, my picture of the fear is um, opening up communication with my mother so that either I say or she says, we, that we say things to each other that would be very hurting. That Sometimes I think I'm afraid that if I really communicated with my mother that this dam would break and I would say everything I've ever wanted to say to her that was painful. Okay. I think I'm getting a sense of something about what you're talking about. That in your 
quest for getting a new connection with your mother, the fear is, and it might be justified, that um, you will make things worse. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, are you aware that you really don't have this to say to your mother, but you have this to say to your image of your mother? Intellectually, I, I know that. I can't seem to bring that through. Okay. Now, we may not do that today. We may not do that today because one of the things I sense about you is you have a highly developed ability to stand firm on things. <laughs> that could sometimes be misunderstood. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. well, it could be. Yes, yes. I didn't say that. That you was did, very right? nice, Virginia. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and that there's a long-standing uh, business about this, of this worry. And that the last thing you want to do is to, is to uh, isolate you and your mother more. Mm -hmm. That's what I get. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you something from my head to your head, and I don't know whether you will agree with it, and that's all right. I'm going to ask that this pillow represent all of your infantile angers right here. And I want you to talk to this pillow about all the things that you wanted to say to this person back here, but it's really this. And I want you to see what happens when you start to say that. I will not be hurt by this, but and neither will this pillow. This is called crying in front of eight million people. <laughs> eight <voice>. million? <laughs> you don't know very well. well. Helen sells a lot of tapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, she might not put you on. Will that be disappointing to you? Oh, uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah, all right. See, what this would be in a universal, in a universal, Linda, uh -huh. is that what we, what we bring up as children, we carry into life as adults unless we integrate it. Right. And I can't think of, of something that would be more healing to people, mm -hmm. both on the level of, I know about that, and also on this other wonderful level, because your caring is so much out in front, that actually, you know that this really has very little to do with your mother at this time. Okay. Matter of fact, probably you realize that if you were to say these things to your mother, she said, I don't remember that. Can you, can you know that's true? Mm -hmm. So that actually, in a way, we're, we're beating up somebody. But somehow, sometimes things stick in our craw. And um, sometimes the release, it's the release out of here that we need to get it. So what would you tell? Here is this image of your mother. What would you tell? Um, I want to tell her that... Say you okay. to her. that you really hurt me. Being unable to ever tell me that you love me, ever nurture me, tuck me in at night, bathe me, just the simple things that mothers do. You avoided just because you didn't, you couldn't be intimate. Okay, now I'd like you to close your eyes and I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to imagine you 10 days old. Who's bathing you? No one. No one? You go dirty? Mm-hmm. I don't believe it. You believe it? I do. How, how dirty were you when you got your first bath? Six years old? Okay. Oh, <laughs> maybe somebody was bathing. Maybe she bathed me when I was 10 days old. All right, now I want you to keep your eyes closed. Okay. And I want you to go inside and see if you really buy that that you didn't get any baths from anybody until you were 10 days old. Possibly. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly what? I didn't get a bath until I was 10 days old. Now, what I all of a sudden am in touch with is leprosy. Is that what you're talking about? That your mother couldn't touch you because you were, a, you had leprosy or something like that? No, it wasn't me. It was her. Uh, was she had leprosy? No, she couldn't touch me. Why? Because she was terrified of me. And you were how old? And how big? I was a wonderful little baby. Wonderful little baby. Where'd you get that idea? I know I was. All right. Now I'd like you to look up at me and, to, and let yourself see that wonderful part that you are this wonderful little baby. Your mother knew that, too. Your mother knew that, too. You know that you did? 
I know that she did. I know that she didn't put it out. Oh, okay. So how long now are you going to trouble yourself and make yourself feel bad for somebody who had it inside but couldn't put it out? How long are you going to do that for you? I, I'm looking. I'd like to end it right now, if is, I could. Is there any part of you that does not fully believe that your mother was very, very connected with you and cared very much about you. What, in fact, was so careful and cared so much that she almost nagged you. Is there any Not question? almost, Virginia. She did nag you, all right? Then I'll make it very strong that she nagged you. She cared about you so much she nagged you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, that you know that's to be true. I think I do. All right, you go inside and see if there's any objection, love. That any part of your body thinks that, that there's an objection to what you're saying. <clears throat> there's some there's something, but I don't know what it is. What does it feel like? A little self worth. Will you come back here? We need you. It feels like the sense I've had all my life is that. Part of her loved me beyond belief, and part of her wanted to destroy me. All right. Let's take that both parts. She loved you beyond belief. Right. What part of her was that part? I guess her heart and whatever a mother, something very deep. Would you pick out your mother's heart, please, from the audience? All right. This is your mother's heart. Believe it or not. <laughs> yes, she has a wonderful heart. She does. All right, would you just be here? Now, what part of you uh, um, you think is your mother's destruction of you? What part of her? Mm hmm. Her, her upbringing. Would you bring her upbringing, please, and do that in the form of her father and her mother? Did she have any brothers or sisters? Seven. Seven. Brothers and sisters? All right. Find a mother and a father and seven brothers and sisters, and we will put them around here somewhere. Okay. As a matter of fact, we'll move down here. Come, That's all the parts move down here. You want to be my mother's mother, Marcy? That's your grandmother, if you don't mind. Yes, your mother's mother. Marcy, okay, would you come up here and bring your father up here? No, she's going to get you. Would you come up to be my grandfather? Okay, would you be right over here now, on this side right there? I think one of her brothers died. But so doesn't matter, he left his imprint behind. Would you come up? Would all, just all of you come up. Are they all, are, were oh, the, let's see. Let's not fiddle with the That's genitals right. if we can help it. Okay. You mean, let's make them all what they were? Yes, oh. that's what fiddling okay. means. <laughs> <laughs> three sisters. And four brothers? Sisters. Or three brothers? And three brothers. Because you were one of those. Will you pick a stand-in for yourself? No, wait a minute. No, not you. No. Well, of course not. This belongs to somebody okay. else. My mother's already here. So your mother's already here, so we got her. We need three men. Three men. Oh, could we want to find some? Here's one. one and do you two guys want to come up? And there are two of them back against the wall. I think so. Come on okay, up. Okay, you have to leave. Okay. Well, we aren't going to be that long. But how many? Are you, how long are you both going to be here? Let's see if we can get that. Fine. Thank you. Are you going to be here? Oh, there's one right there. Oh, yeah. Come on up, please. They're sparse, but they're here. Yes, of course it's all right. Hearts have no sex, by the way. Oh, Just thought that there's no such thing as a woman's heart and a man's heart. Heart is heart. All right. This now, here's your mother. Right. Well, what you said is the part of you, a part of her that wants to destroy you is represented by all these. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when you say that, what you were also saying is the conclusions that she reached, however she reached them, about what happened here was the part that got in her way of having her heart talk to you. That's what you're telling me. Is it or is it not? I'm kind of spacey, so would you, go, would you say that again? Yes. Uh, I'll put this down now because we'll get this next time. Take both my hands. Okay. What you said was, and it was brilliant what you said, in my opinion, you knew about your mother's heart. She couldn't express what was in her heart because you said of her upbringing. 
her upbringing is, is composed of all of these people. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what I'd like you to do, from what you know, is I'd like you, where is, where is your grandmother and grandfather? All right. Would you posture them in relation to each other that shows where she was? Would you do that? Posture them. You need to be flat on the floor. Flat on the floor. With a lot of ravioli around you. <laughs> <laughs> flat on the floor. Well, could she just make it even more so by putting her nose on the floor? That's you right. That's right. Nose. Good. That's the gesture you used before, remember? Way down on the floor. You need to be like this, ready to kick her. Okay. Now, I'd like you to just be down here just a little bit here. Sure. Down there, ready? No, you don't do that. It's too gentle. You're going to, while he's busy, that's right, the kicking yeah. part, okay? <laughs> now, while that's going on, who is the first born here? Uh, this person. All right, would you put that person, model that, or posture that person in relation to this? You need to be over next to him, um, kind of like this. Behind him, like he's, right her, he's her shield? No, no, you, uh, he made you do lots of different things from a very young age of all highly intellectual things. All right, so she's so you, down there then. you're afraid of him. Submissive. So you, she's you down here on the floor then with him, pleading yeah, and begging, so, yeah. down on the floor. You go way down on the floor, over a little bit in the front here, cowering in front of him, okay? Now the next one. My mother. All right, so you now come in. You are the second, she's the first, <clears throat> second born. Right. You, Where do you put her? You need to be over on this side, um, kind of in the same position that she is, scrubbing the floor. Okay. Now what's the next one? Boy, I'm not even sure. I think there was a, a brother. Well? And I'm not sure of, of these people. Um, Doesn't really matter. Okay. You just be hanging around looking really wimpy. <laughs> what is he supposed to be doing? Hanging around looking wimpy. Wimpy. All right. Now, when you say that, now what I understand is you mean this. Well, except that you're a man, so you're not quite cowering like this, but you just disappear sort of in the woodwork. Okay. Hold on. Okay. And the other brothers do the same thing. All right. Just lower yourself. Okay. And aren't they all in front of him like he was the, the um, big pasha in this group? Right. All right. So go in front so you look properly cowed. Heads bared in front of your father. <clears throat> now, what about those two? You need to uh, also just be staying as far away from him as possible, but not too far that he would be angry because you were too far away, and, and also looking sheepish and, and uh, unobtrusive. So you're full of shame. You're full of feeling victimized. You're full of fear. All those words. Do they mean something to you? I think so. All right. Shame comes to me so strongly, and I hear now hear your mother say, what a shame it is that you don't do something with your music. Anyway, let's look at that now. Now, I want you to make the sounds, everybody doing some kind of sound that fits your posture. Let's hear it. Louder with you. Can you make some word sound that goes with that? Louder, louder. All right, let that fade. Let that fade. And tell me, what did you feel as you looked at that? Well, I felt really sad and a lot of sympathy for my mother. And my grandfather wasn't uh, angry enough. But that's okay. Okay, yes, I could see that he was. Now, let's leave this for the moment. Don't get up. Just to stay right where you are. Now, how did he get into this picture to find her? He was... Um... He was funny. What, was funny? Okay. And sang a lot. Okay, all right. So he hid his pain under being funny and saying whatever else. But how did he get to know she was there? How did he even find out she was in the world? Well, I believe people are drawn to each other. Well, how did he do it? Did, 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 was he a friend of one of the brothers? Did, he, did they go to a dance? Uh, how did he find out she was in the world? I really don't know on this level. Make it up. Okay. Um... 
they were at a party together, and uh, they met at a party through mutual friends. And um, he was attracted to her because she was religious, a good Catholic, and very had a lot of moral integrity. All right. So he didn't expect her to fool around. Right. Expected her to be an honest woman. And did that? Mother. And did that mean that he came from a place where the woman was on the loose side? No. He his parents died when he was very young, and he was the youngest, and his next sibling was 20 years older. So he was kind of an alone. So who took care of him? His older brother and his wife. So and there probably was was for him nothing he could really put his hands no. to. Was that wife loose? His brother's wife was I, she I on the loose think, side? I doubt it. Well, somebody was loose in his family, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he was. He was very loose and very promiscuous and wild and crazy kind of guy. Okay. All right. Okay. So now he finds her. Now, I'd just like you for a moment to just think in terms of how people are. He's wild and loose, and she is very, very uh, strong and looks like she's full of integrity. Right. Can you imagine that he would find that a support for him? Oh, definitely. And that she would depend on him to bring light into her life? Right. All right, so what I'd like you to do is sing in your best voice and be as funny as you can <laughs> and go in there and rescue her. Just rescue her and take her in your arms. Just do that. Let's see it happen, because that's what you do, because she's exactly right for you. So go in and do that. She's got the right part. <laughs> so let it happen. It's not happening, let me think. Um, why, don't, why don't you come with me? We're going to go party tonight. There's a good party I know of. Oh, oh. You want to come? Um, Maria? I'd like to. Um, Maria? Madeline. Go ahead. That's my name. Maria. Naomi. Naomi. All right. Okay. Now you can all fade for the moment. Just fade a little bit. Now I want you to look at those two for the minute. Okay. And what do you feel now as you look at them? They're cute. <laughs> I'd like you to keep that picture because that's exactly there. What he didn't know about her was that that rigidity would be over everything, mm -hmm. way beyond her mat her maturity or her integrity, and his funniness would go against her feeling. Mm -hmm that there was could be any order at all. And so he, he what was used as a way to get together became a, a yoke around their necks. Mm -hmm. So by the time you came, now how many are in your family? You had three. And I'm the youngest. You're the youngest. What were the two that came before you, brothers? A middle brother and older sister. All right, would you find your older sister and your brother? You can all just sit down now and thank God your life is over. <laughs> Maybe. Is this your oldest sister? Yes. And where is your... He's coming. No, he's leaving. No, he's leaving. <laughs> All right. We've run out of men. Maybe well, I could pick a woman from my mother's heart, and he could be my brother right here. All right. Go ahead and do that. Would you be my brother now? Okay. Whatever you'd like, my brother. I have such a big heart about this. <laughs> All right. Now... my mother's heart. Okay. And then what you do is to find... Um, you have another sister? You have no. someone for you. Someone a, a stand-in for you. Somebody want to stand in for me? All right. Now, I want you to posture these two, because I see is what's happening here. They stopped doing that. Right. All right. So what happened? And here's this firstborn child. My hunch is that your mother went like this after a while and started moving off. Don't fall off of there. I don't want okay. you to do that. Your mother would be like this, but with your back turned. All right. Oh. Okay. You That's would be over by my dad holding uh, his hand. All right. All right. Okay and facing your mother's back, but probably not facing it at all, more facing your father. And now what about your brother? Where does he come? You are um, off to the side of both of them quite a, quite a ways, and um, you're shuffling your feet and looking down at your feet. Okay. Over here? Yeah, but uh, with your back to them. It's kind of what are you doing in this world, and I don't know what wimpy is what you would say that way, right. was, right? Yeah, pretty angry, sullen, sullen with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, just because look like a rain cloud. Sullen. Now for you, put yourself in there. I Where, is she, where are you? You're standing. Here you are. Where are you? 
I am uh, skipping around on the outside as well. You don't have to skip, but I'm lightly. Yeah, you can skip around there. Just skip around and crawl over something. Just be careful not to touch anybody too much. All right. And you be careful that you aren't all around here either. Okay. All right, when well, you look at that now, what do you feel? Sad. Okay. This wasn't always this way. But it was this way when you knew it. Okay. Now, what happened to him? He was kind of beaten down by my father because he wasn't coming through with what my father's dreams of himself were. And he was really distorted by my mother. I know what you're talking about. If I were to meet him today, one of the things that I would see that he would be very shy and not want to put himself forward. He's an alcoholic and he's very yeah, well or, withdrawn. And so that he would have to do something like this. <coughs> so that you're alcoholic today. That doesn't mean you aren't bright or nice. It means that when the pain comes, you drowned it. And what happened to your uh, sister, your older sister? She ran away and then became a mother and then ran away from that and became a hippie and now she's born again. Okay, so what she did, so we just see you running out, then you run back, and then you run out again and run back. So if you don't mind doing that, you can do that. And you? You, um... That's me you're talking about. Right. You hung in there and um, tried to make everybody happy. Okay, did you succeed even a little bit? Oh, yeah. I want you to be in touch with that. Okay. What are you feeling right now as you're letting yourself know that? Um, it's a burden. Okay. Now what I'd like to have show you. I want all of you to take your postures real tight. Real tight. Everybody to take your postures that you got real tight. And you know about that tightness. That's why you cry. You're the self-worth, right? Here's mother's heart, which beats. And I want you to be like a metronome, beating, just beating, um, 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 back and forth. And I want you to cry a little bit, and that represents the cry from all over here. Now, I'm going to ask all of you now to let yourself give yourself a message of appreciation and start it off by taking a breath. Let your body fill with air, and as you do, let your body expand to meet the air. It comes into you until your whole body is standing upright and you're free to move in any way you can. Let that all happen. Letting and testing your moving back and forth. Now, when you get on your own feet, look around, and as you see people, do what you want to do with them. And do it. <laughs> now, what I want to find out from you, Linda, is what did you see here? He was transformed into love. Yes. And you know how it happened? No. What did I say? I'm going to treat you. I'm going to act like a school teacher for a minute. What did I do? What in, what the directions did I give to make this change? You asked them to breathe. Yes, and then I'm not sure I was listening. Okay. I'm glad you're telling me that because it's very important. When I asked them to breathe, then I asked them to let their bodies expand to meet the breath that was going on. Now, do you remember that you heard it? Vaguely. Okay, and that's all right, because you were, you were involved with other things. And then I said, now do what fits for you, standing on your own feet. And did you notice what they did? What did you see them do? They stood up and, and looked alive and nurtured people. 
All right. Now you see this lady right here. This is a lady that behaved in relation to, not this, because she didn't know about that, in relation to the best that she knew how, which is try to get her kids to do it. And she wasn't all that successful, but she tried hard. Now as you look at her from here, what are you aware of feeling toward her? I feel a lot more compassion. Can you move a little, a little, a little closer to her and see what that feels Let's like? As that. close as you want to feel. And let yourself be in touch as you're here now, being aware that what you're now touching is a life force of your mother. What you saw before were the behaviors that came out because the life force didn't have a place to express itself, and that's a self-worth for you. What do you feel self-worth? Mm, I'm feeling really a tremendous amount of love and just uh, overwhelming. Now when you come to your owner, you don't have to cry anymore. Mm -hmm. You want to come over and you can enjoy her. And she can enjoy you, but it's life that she's enjoying. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? It was... How was that for you? It was... I don't know, I don't know if I can put it in words. It was very helpful, very graphic. It, it's... It's a... Uh, it's something that I would desperately love to be able to translate into my life, the, what I'm feeling now, and have been missing the the plug, the connection. I just I. Can you how see do I then talk to my mother differently? Can you see yourself doing whatever the it is? Yes, I can. Okay. All right, because your eyes have changed. There's a different expression in your eyes, and there's a different expression in your face right here. And that says to me that you have moved into another place in yourself. And I don't know what the exact words will be. I don't know what, what the transactions will be. But one thing I do know is that you will never look at your mother again in the same way. And she will never look at you in the same way because you will come in with something different. And now all the stuff about having to yell at her and so on is really irrelevant. Are you aware of that? We went through a period where what we were doing is castigating everybody. That was supposed to be for health. Telling how bad our parents were and all the rest of that. And that's not where it is at all. And now how about you, love? 20 words or less. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to say, love. I know that a lot of things can't go into words. I'm All I'm asking is if you have any, would you like to share them? I feel something has shifted. And I think you're, you're right that I, I won't ever be able to look at my mother in the same way again. Um, I feel clearer and much more loving. I'm, I'm in love with everyone in the room. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very, very much for doing that. That was wonderful for me. This, you did a universal trip. There are very few people in the world who couldn't have taken this trip with you. Maybe not in the same, feeling the same way right. as your mother, but how many of us feel that our growing up was deficient? Heavens! We should have been born to the most, uh, in, uh, the most uh, exciting, uh, intelligent, uh, right uh, people all the time. What was the matter with them? That they got their egg and sperm together and activated us when they weren't really there to do it, huh? Oh, wonderful. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. I've spoken to you about the fact that I've been working with families for over 40 years. And um, I see a lot of things. Everything that I strive for, you just saw. Virginia often stressed the importance of warmth and understanding, which is particularly evident in this session. Her work also had a definite structure and precision that allowed her to go far beyond just friendship and holding hands. Both Virginia's compassion and her precision made her successful in opening new possibilities for Linda and for others. For example, you may have noticed how often Virginia laughs and jokes about Linda's limited views of her mother and carries them to extremes in order to make them seem ridiculous to Linda. Most of Virginia's work here has the overall goal of getting Linda to experience what it must have been like to be her mother. When Linda finally does this, 
she experiences the compassion that releases her old resentments. We are fortunate to have a follow-up interview with Linda from about three years later. Linda, now that it's uh, about three years since your session with Virginia, we're interested to find out what your perspective is now and the impact that that's had on your experience. Mm -hmm. Well, it was interesting. Um, it's been something that I haven't been able to forget mm -hmm. and, um, and have talked about with friends. In fact, I have laughed about with friends, especially some of the friends that were there in the audience with me or who, people who have become friends. And, um, you know, the person that was my heart uh, in that tape and the person that was my mother in that tape or my, my father, um, where we actually wound up having discussions about that episode and being that vulnerable and uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. I've, I've, it's affected, I think, my relationship with my mother and it's also affected my work and, and mm -hmm. even when I notice the way parents talk to their children and I'm aware of how wonderful the gems were that, that, that she had. had. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it sounds like it's had a fairly broad impact oh, in a lot of areas. I'll never forget it. And um, if we could go into some of the areas, how, how has it been different with your mother or what's happened there? Well, I think that um, I did a lot of thinking after that session happened because I spent, what, an hour or an hour and a half having to, to, in front of what I felt at the time was the world, talk about my mother and my relationship. And um, I felt real upset and tearful. And, and I, I came away, I think, with a whole lot more compassion about my mother and what she's been through in her life. Mm -hmm. And um, it's changed my position in how I look at her and how I feel about her. Mm -hmm. So, do you do things differently with her now than you would have? Yeah. Or? Oh, yeah. I um, I look at her differently. I've I've had occasions, lots of occasions, where um, I've been sitting across the table from my mom, and nobody else is in the house, and I will ask her things about her life. Mm -hmm. uh, how did her parents treat her? Um, in fact, she she said to me, "Well, I think that my father would have been arrested for child abuse today." If, mm -hmm. if he had done things today to me that, that he did um, 50 or... Well, my mother's old enough to be my grandmother, so we really skipped a generation. Mm -hmm. uh, she had me when she was 44. Uh -huh. So there, there was a big generation gap there. Yeah. And um, I've gotten a lot of insights into how she was raised and why she was so critical of me because of some of the things that happened to her. And she opened her heart to me in lots of ways. In fact, I felt like I was her best friend, which was really something I would never, ever have said before. But having listened to Virginia and watched her work with some of the other people that were there, I pulled some of those techniques and, and just incorporated them in my relationship with my mother. I spent more time after that asking my mother questions. Mm -hmm. um, if we were taking a trip together, and I, tr I tried to invite her to go on day trips, if I had to go up into the mountains for my work, I would ask her if she wanted to come along. Mm -hmm. And in those car trips, I asked her about her life. Mm -hmm. How, what was your dad like to you? And if you wanted, if you chose to have kids all over again, would would you do that? And I really tried to listen to the answers that she gave, and I, I started recognizing. I mean, this sounds kind of weird, but. I, I said to myself, boy, Linda, if you think you have had it bad having her as a mother, imagine what it was like for her having them as her parents, because mm -hmm. she had some tough mm -hmm. parents. Yeah. She yeah. had, you know, Italian immigrant parents who were very hard on her. So I just started personalizing, I guess, my relationship mm -hmm. with her more. Mm -hmm. Great. So it sounds like that's been a lot more positive for you. Yes. You know. Oh, it has, definitely. Probably for her, too. I would think so, although I don't get that feedback from her because she's not a person that shares that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. I definitely think just because she did open up to me that she feels that way too. Okay. But I had to make the change. You see, it wasn't for a long yeah. time. I think I waited for my mother to to change. Why does she do this and why does she do that? And mm -hmm. what one of the things that came out of working with Virginia was it was it's my work and I'm the one that needs to shift my position or or try something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a big shift. Yeah, it yeah. is.
Good. Um, and you mentioned also that it's had an impact in some other areas of your life. Uh, can you say a little bit more about that, if it's shifted your way of mm -hmm. being in some other areas, too? My work is, is as a teacher. I, I have my own consulting business, and I teach workshops to adults and parents and uh, community members. And, and most recently, in the past couple of years, I've shifted to youth leadership trainings where I will work with teenagers, high school kids, who will talk to me about their parents. And high school kids typically are complaining about their parents. Mm -hmm. And they are talking about how their parents don't listen to them or they're never validated or all their parents do is pick on the things that they don't do well and not say to them how much they care about them or why they appreciate them being in their lives. And, and I've seen myself do some Virginia Satir tricks where I will say to them, you know, you might be the one that needs to tell your mom first that you're glad she's your mom. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for your mom to tell you, she may not be the one to do that. You may have to say, you know, Mom, I know you really do sacrifice mm -hmm. a lot for us and I really appreciate it and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. and so you're passing on yeah. your learnings to, yeah. to others too. Great. Thinking back on it now, do you, are there any other comments that you have about um, your experience there? Um, I can't get the, the image that sticks out in my mind the most other than seeing this imposing, powerful woman next to me in her flowered dress, you know, mm -hmm. um, was the image I have of her working with the mother and the, and the little child. Um, bringing the little child up on a chair so that the two were looking eye to eye and mm -hmm. I, I don't know why that was so profound for me but um, it, it symbolized to me how important it is to really look eye to eye I mean with my own internal little girl mm -hmm. you know in that process as well as um, maybe it's the old Indian saying of walk a mile and the other person's moccasins that was profound to me and the whole experience of being that open and pouring out that part of me was something I'll never forget. And the way that she treated people is is a message that I just take wherever I go. Uh -huh. That respect and uh, dignity that she tried to create between people that in my work with teenagers they are perceived as powerless. Mm -hmm. And um, the adults have all the power. And I, my work a lot is, is having teams of young people and adults come together to work in partnership mm -hmm. and the adults either usually take over and the teenagers are always trying to get a word in edgewise mm -hmm. and using some of those Virginia Satir things to have people be more on an equal basis is another thing I've taken from that experience. Great. That sounds good too. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you for coming back and letting us know the impact for you and I'm guessing some of those similar impacts will be going with a lot of the people who view this tape. Well, I am curious about um, whether you were surprised to actually work with Virginia that much on stage or if that's if that was something that you like to do a lot in workshops. Well, I was I was shocked. I, I only thought I was going to be a member of the studio audience. That mm -hmm. that was the the uh, Agreement, or would you come and just take up some space in the audience and clap? And mm -hmm. and um, I raised my hand to make some kind of a comment, and before I knew it, she was saying, "Come on up here, come on up here on stage." And and literally, mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember the beginning of that session. I do not remember how it started or how I was swept into it. I'm kind of curious to see after three years w what happened because I don't remember. Yeah. People were so unbelievable to me after that. People were coming up to me again and again saying thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing that. I saw my mom or I saw my relationship with my dad or, and I realized that that speaking the truth stuff is real powerful. Yeah. Not just yeah. the good stuff, but the, the dark or heavy stuff or hard stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of other people will have the opportunity to do that through yeah. the videotapes. Yeah. Well, thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you.